form. What are those two indeterminate forms? Do you remember? Yeah, well, it's 0 over 0, actually. That's one of them. And then the other one is infinity over infinity, plus or minus in each case. It can be either positive or negative. If you have a quotient and these other things are met, you can take the derivative of just the top and put it over the derivative of just the bottom and do that limit. This is not equal to this, but the limit is. How many times can you apply L'Hopital's rule in a problem, in a, in, in a chain like this? How many times could you do L'Hopital's rule, theoretically? Many as you want, many as needed, as long as you continue to have an indeterminate form. So when you have a division, it's really easy or easy-ish to show that it is an indeterminate form. What happens if you run L'Hopital's rule on something that isn't an indeterminate form? Do you know what happens? Do you remember? Have you ever done that before? Do you want to take a guess? What happens when you run L'Hopital's rule on something that is a, determ a determined form? The world stops there. <laughs> the world stops there. Black hole opens up. No, you end up with like an answer that makes sense sometimes, like seven. You're like, oh, that's comforting. I got an answer. It is absolutely not correct. <laughs> I've never seen it where it, it breaks real nicely, but it doesn't scream at you that you're doing wrong math. So just be careful. The challenge, though, is that L'Hopital's rule sometimes can be applied to things where it's not super apparent. The first way, the first way is that the algebra, the actual differentiation might get nasty. In general, in general, when you take a derivative, you like it when what happens to the overall complexity? Gets yeah, simpler, right? So you do L'Hopital's rule, get smaller. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Nice. Sometimes, though, when you take a derivative, what happens? Gets worse. So usually the case is, you might think to yourself, Sujon, you might think to yourself, hey, I'm doing L'Hopital's rule. I take the derivative. It got uglier. Oh, I must be doing something wrong. There are cases where you take, you do the derivative. It gets worse, but it becomes something that you can evaluate. So that's the first way it can get more difficult. The second way is the indeterminate form can be hidden. We've seen these a little bit. We've seen these a little bit, meaning it's not necessarily a quotient to begin with, but you can do what? You can turn it into a quotient by not doing, do some little clever manipulation. So let's just, let's do a warm up here. Don't write anything down. I just want you to stare at this. Don't write, don't write anything down. Just stare at this. And when you have an answer to this, raise your hand. Stare at this. And when you have an answer to this, raise your hand. Negative x as x goes to infinity. Zero. And then you're with 5x over 7x, which goes to 5 sevenths. So don't freak out and always use L'Hopital's rule. When you use the product rule, sometimes you have to use it. Um, sometimes when you integrate, sometimes you use partial fraction decomposition, sometimes you use parts. But are those methods always applicable? No. Is L'Hopital's rule always applicable? No. So let's actually use L'Hopital's rule, shall we? Let's use it, see what happens here. If I can get this to be up. Zero over zero, it is an indeterminate form. So in this case, you could apply L'Hopital's rule. And by the way, just because you can apply L'Hopital's rule, is that always going to give you an answer? No, sometimes it's unsuccessful. But in this case, does this look like it's something you get a nicer derivative when you take the derivative? Does, this, does the complexity go down or up when you take the derivative, do you think? I'm not sure. And then also, there's something in there that's kind of a little challenge to take a derivative. X to the X. So sometimes you have to get pretty heavy into the other things, like differentiating. This is what it looks like when you do this one. I put it right here for you. The first thing you have to do is you have to differentiate the top. So you're doing the derivative of X to the X. The really cool thing, you can do X to the X. You know what another way to write that is? E to the X ln X. This is the same as this. This is called a cool little maneuver. And what can you do to this? Differentiate. Look what happens. It's this times the derivative of the top. Remember? And then what rule do you have to use to differentiate this? Product rule. There's the product rule. Now here's the thing. The overall theme, though, is what happens to the overall complexity when we take the derivative of this thing? Does it go up or down? Down up or down. Well, <laughs> you'd hope, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. You do this. You do L'Hopital's rule once, and this is where you end up right here. Now, can you evaluate the limit of that one? Can you evaluate the limit of this right here? 
Can you plug in one? What? Why not? It is still an indeterminate form. So what do you apply again? So when you apply L'Hopital's rule, I like putting the H over this. Here's what it becomes on top. The bottom is okay, but as you suspected, the top turns into this thing of fun. So you might think to yourself, man, why would I do that? Well, you do that because guess what? It evaluates to 1, 0, 0, 1. It comes out to negative 2. Sometimes the algebra gets nasty. That's what I'm just trying to communicate to you. Sometimes the algebra gets a little weird. That's what you have to remember at this point. Yeah, e to the negative x is what? So this is the limit as x goes to infinity of x over e to the x. Is that an indeterminate form? Why is it an indeterminate form? On the top and the? So you do have an indeterminate form. So now what can we apply? Huh? L'Hopital's rule. And we end up with the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over what? e to the x, which is what? 0. Hey, nice. So sometimes it works out really well. Now, technically, there's no division in this yet. But how much work do you have to do to make the division here? Not that much, right? This is about as simple of a hiding mechanism you can get. Now, what happens if we make it a little bit harder to see what we need to do? You might get something that looks like doo -doo -doo. this one right here. Is there any division there? No. Any negative exponents? Do you see any negative exponents? No. No. But you can force division. Do you remember how you can force division to occur? Uh, we're not, we're not going to use the product rule. We're not taking the derivative yet. We have to first put it in an indeterminate form. It has to be in that form first. So I'm going to put one in the denominator. 1 over x. Is this the same thing? It is the same thing. It absolutely is the same thing. So what can we apply now? L'Hopital's rule. Okay, I mean, I'll, I'll have the conversation with just Emily, but it'd be nice if other people could chime in. You apply L'Hopital's rule, and what do you end up with for your form? You still have the same limit, but what does the top become? 1 over x. And what does the bottom become? Negative x to the negative 2. Oh, but what does this equal? Just do the algebra on this. Do the algebra, and you get negative what? Negative what? Yes. So what's that going to? And it's not infinity. Don't let me copy things down, right? 0 to the right. What does that equal? Hey, very nice. So we just forced the division to appear. We forced the division to appear. Oh gosh, what about this one though? What about this one? Let's think about what's going on here. As x goes to infinity, this is getting infinitely big, right? As x goes to infinity, this is getting what? So we kind of have this form infinity to the zero. Something's getting infinitely big, but the power is getting really, really small. So they're fighting against each other, right? There's three categories of answers. Either, either infinity gets bigger too fast and it blows up, or the, z it goes, the, the exponent goes to zero really quickly and the thing goes to zero, or maybe they kind of come to a stalemate at the number like seven. Who knows? Does anybody have an idea about how we can force a division to come into play? This is a little harder and we haven't done it yet, but does anybody have a mathematical operation that we might be able to do to force a division? We have to have it in indeterminate form first before we take the derivative. Yes? Um, we do we have an indeterminate form? Yeah. We do, we do. We the have an indeterminate form. What can we apply? L'Hopital's rule. So we apply L'Hopital's rule, and we end up with the limit as x goes to infinity. What's the derivative of ln? 1 over x over 1. So what does that go to? 0. Ah, so is the answer 0? Ah ln of y equals 0. y is the answer we're looking for, but we know that ln y is equal to 0. So what does that mean y equals? 1. So the answer to this question is 1. 
is one, not zero. I can guarantee that I will make this mistake and that some of you will make this mistake. I'm not going to take massive points off because look at the work you have to do to get there. I mean, you have to do some pretty substantive work, right? And then it's kind of disappointing when you get to the end and you're all sad. Oh, okay. What about this one right here? Very similar, right? Do you see a quotient in here? No. So you let y equal ln, sorry, you let y equal the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x to the x. Now I have a question. When we did this one, could I just have used log instead of ln? Would it have changed the answer? Would it have changed the work in any way? So sometimes books like to use LOG because everything's in base 10, 10 fingers, 10 toes, right? Some people like to use LN. I firmly believe that many textbooks choose LN over log simply because it's shorter. An eight. Yeah, I literally, I, I firmly believe that. So over here, what can we do now to both sides? Can you, oh, you can't, you actually have a hurt voice, that's right. You're actually not just, not just miming for me, for, I, I understand now. <laughs> 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 okay, so we have ln of y is equal to, and remember what I said about the limit in the natural log, you can switch them. So you can do the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of ln of x to the, ah, but what can you bring to the front now? Ah, so you have the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of x ln x. Oh wait, does that look familiar? Oh, we just did that one. Is there a division in x ln x? No, but can you force there to be one? Oh yeah, we did the work over here. So what does it come out to be? Zero. So you know that this comes out to zero. So what does y equal? One. Your answer is again one. We did some of the work already, so we didn't need to do it out. In the first one, we show that this is equal to zero. So we're just using part A right there. So remember that first example I gave you where I said, hey, taught you L'Hopital's rule. And then I said, uh, showed you this one. Not that one, excuse me. I showed you this the, what one first. Where is it? Um, right here, this first one. <laughs> and you quickly identify what's the answer to this. So just because you have L'Hopital's rule, does that mean you have to use it the entire time? No. It also means you just need to not forget some of the basics about algebra. So if I were to give you this one, what's the first thing you have to do on this one before you try to see if L'Hopital's rule can work? What do you have to do first? Plug it in, and can you? No. Then what do you have to do? Simplify. So you have to simplify doing what? Combining those two terms. So you combine those two terms into a single quotient. You can't do L'Hopital's rule. Well, actually, you kind of can, but I want you to combine them. What do you end up with? I think sine of x minus x over x sine x. Is that in indeterminate form? What's the top go to? No. What's sine of zero? Top is zero, bottom is zero. So is this an indeterminate form? Uh-huh. Now you would then do L'Hopital's rule. We're not going to do this one because you have to do L'Hopital's rule twice and it gets real big, but you can do it with L'Hopital's rule twice. What I want you to look at right now is just look at this. Don't write it down, but you might have seen this before. Who's seen this before? You may have seen this before. Anybody? Take out your calculator and plug in a big number for x and listen carefully. Don't tell me the answer. Raise your hand when you think you know what the answer is. Let's see if you can do it. Don't say it out loud. Find it and see if you have, we now get to live in right here. How many axes do we have? Three. Three. Z goes up. What's the key thing that feels a little strange here? Can someone tell me something might feel a little strange? Yeah, X and Y, what's strange about X and Y? They feel like they should go the other way, right? Because you're used to X going to the what, right? I understand it feels weird. This is all I can really tell you at this point. Get over it. This is how it is, okay? This is the perspective we are working with. Z goes up. So Z goes up. I gotta get the piece of paper back on the wall. Z goes up. What comes at you? X, and what goes to the right? Y. So if Z is going up and Y is going this way, what plane is this right here? The ZY or the YZ plane. YZ would be better, I guess. What's the floor? The XY plane. You've got to understand which goes in which direction. If you invert them, things get hard. 
And just because it seems easier for you, and maybe if it's even correct, it's really hard for people to reevaluate even when they're really good at it. So what are points in three space gonna look like? This is how you would get to the point one, two, three. How far forward do you go? Yeah, you go one forward, and then you go two to the right, and then you go three up. You go one, two, and three. Now, even if you are super careful, even if you are super good at math and drawing and visualization, can this get messy? Yes. Are you going to be expected to draw super complicated things in three space by hand? No. Some simple things? Absolutely. Which octant is that pointed? <laughs> yeah. X, Y, and Z are all positive, so we're going to call that the first octant. Now, you might ask yourself, what's the second? What's the third? What's the seventh? What's the eighth? The answer to that question is, there's no agreement. There is no standard labeling. So I'm never going to ask you, like, in the seventh octant. No, 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 no. But the first octant is always going to be the positive, positive, positive one. You, you with me so far? OK. What axis is that point on? The z-axis. It's down one point. That's nice. So what happens if we look at two points at the same time? Here's the first point right here. Here's the second point right there. First point is ABC. Second point is XYZ. What might we want to find between these two points? Distance. Anybody want to take a guess what the formula for distance in free space? What does it look like? Um, yeah, the root of? Root of X minus A squared yep. plus Y minus B mm -hmm. plus C minus C squared. It is a direct extension of the Pythagorean theorem. In three dimensions, many of the things we're going to do are perfect extensions of how we were going to do them, like this. It's literally just adding on another term to the Pythagorean theorem. Is that always going to be the case? No. Three dimensions, some of the time, will allow us to just do a little bit more work, add another layer on, and we're done. Sometimes new things come up. Here's one specific example. If I gave you a two-dimensional graph, or last year when you saw some polynomial, and I gave you a point, I could ask you, is, it, is the graph concave up there or concave down? It's one or the other, right? Concave up or concave down, or some sort of a horizontal tangent, and that's G, but the origin. Ah, in three dimensions, it can be concave down and concave up at the same time. Ooh. Couldn't do that in two dimensions. But certain things like this are just direct extensions. The algebra is just a little bit more challenging. That's it. What does a simple graph look like in three dimensions? So for example, let's say I'm in three dimensions and I said right here, what does z equal three look like? Anybody want to guess what that looks like? It's a what? It's a plane. It's all the points where z equals three. Does it matter what x equals? No. Does it matter, does it matter what y equals? No. So you go to three and what do you draw? A plane and it would extend infinitely in all of those directions. There's z equals three. Nice. Goes through three right there. What about, what about y equals two? What is that? It's a plane, yeah. But instead of, it's right here at two. So it goes like this. There's y equals two. What plane is the red one parallel to? Which plane? The xy plane. Which plane is y equal 2 parallel to? Xz. You're going to answer a lot of questions like this just to understand what perspective you have. Side note, where do these two planes intersect? Yeah, they intersect in a line. So we will graph planes. We will graph lines. We will graph curvy things in space. We will graph surfaces. So for example, this, this first thing I showed you right here, let's say we put it on the floor in front of us, and each temperature was that high from the, the floor. So you would get a surface where the higher the surface, the higher the temperature. We're going to look at surfaces that are like that. We're going to look at surfaces that are like globular, all sorts of fun stuff like that. Are you excited? <laughs> are you ever going to tell us to put our surface on a flat surface and graph a surface? By Lockheed Martin and the Orion program in the days and weeks ahead. Wow. 
Wow. Pretty cool. Again, a good view of yeah, the tip. The, the, it was at the top. As three, awaits, boost, uh, the arrival three booster of, uh, rockets. Got it up. Occurring 18 Came minutes back. ago at uh, 10.29 a.m. Central Time, 8.29 a.m. Pacific Time. The coordinates for splashdown, the final coordinates of splashdown, 23.6 degrees north latitude, 116.46 degrees west longitude. Orion splash. Yeah, no, it's okay. Uh, I, we I uh, wound up uh, with three and a half of the five uh, crew modules.